Hi. I've been playing this game called Deep Rock Galactic lately, and I think it's a lot of fun, and I want to tell you about it. So this game is about space dwarves. They go down into the caves, and they mine some minerals, and then they shoot some bugs. But the more you look into this game, the more stuff seems to be going all wrong for it, because the maps are procedurally generated. Yeah! It's early access. Ah! And it's made by Europeans. That's nasty. But to be honest, if every early access game was produced like Deep Rock Galactic is, uh, I don't think people would have such a problem with early access games, because Ghost Ship seems to have only put this game into early access to give the balancing aspects of the game a bit of a tune. Uh, but Deep Rock Galactic is pretty much a finished game as far as I'm concerned in most aspects. Anyway, the game is very TF2-like which is probably why I like it, and that there are characters with different abilities that are designed in a way that requires you to work together. Uh, you can equip hats, and the names of the characters are Scout, Engineer, Gunner, and Driller. So basically, it's exactly like TF2 in every way. But if there are any uh, DRG devs watching this video, if any of this stuff is intended, I, I, I see the references and I definitely appreciate them. But the gameplay is honestly nothing like TF2. In fact, I'd probably describe the Deep Rock Galactic experience as a hybrid between the spelunking portions of Minecraft and the wave shooter parts of Left 4 Dead. The whole point of the game is to drop into an alien planet space cave thing and work together with your fellow dwarves to complete an objective, mostly mining some stuff, but you can also find alien eggs or kill a boss, it just depends on the game mode that you select. Along the way you can collect gold to get money that you use to upgrade your guys, or buy some hats, or change the color of your beard, just cosmetic stuff. And then you sustain yourself over the course of the level by collecting certain minerals that you can exchange for resupply drops. <laughs> but one of the coolest parts of this game, to me at least, is how well the classes work together when traversing the caves. Each character has abilities that are intended to be used as support, so if you're not working together with your teammates, you're pretty much just wasting potential. For instance, the engineer can shoot a gun that places little platforms on the wall, right? Which you can definitely use to get around yourself, but it pairs really, really well with the scout's grappling hook to access minerals that are way too high up on the wall to reach. That kind of thing, that kind of synergy is pretty much essential to the success and speed of your operations and efficiency is key here because despite there being no actual time limit the longer you spend down in the caves the more dangerous it tends to become over time since resources are limited and big waves of enemies come every 10 minutes or so so it can be really easy for you guys to get petered out if you stay down too long and then when you're finally done getting all of the stuff that you need to get for the objective you can decide to call in the drop pod and extract you and the extraction part of the game is also pretty fucking intense because the with the dangerous music the constant on onslaught of enemies as you hurry up to get back to the drop pod in less than five minutes with all of your loot, making sure no dwarf is left behind. On easier difficulties with a well-coordinated team, the extraction sequence can often be just as simple as sticking together, retracing your own steps, and blowing past a bunch of bugs. But if even one of your teammates falls down a hole, it can be one of the most nail-biting moments in the entire game when you make that spur-of-the-moment risky decision to try and rescue him. You have to simultaneously fight off the horde, your teammates have to cover you as you make either a heroic plunge to revive him, only minutes remaining before the drop pod leaves without both of you. I'm telling you, the rounds where you and your teammates barely end up making it back to the pod with less than 30 seconds left is hands down one of the more memorable parts of this game for sure and it's honestly a lot of fun. <laughs> but I want to talk about the enemies in this game because it definitely would not be nearly as fun if you were just running around collecting shiny space diamonds and nothing else. The first person shooter aspect of Deep Rock is actually really well done and it requires you to be quick on your feet and aware of your surroundings at pretty much all times. There's a pretty moderate amount of enemy types that you'll see in a typical round but it never really seems to get that stale since each enemy type requires you to react differently to their presence. Like for instance, the common bugs, they just run at you and attack you, but the exploder bugs are a lot faster, they're quieter, and are basically just the creepers of this game, so you have to take them out at a distance or run away before they explode. There's little baby ones that basically just gang up on you and require you to either melee them to save ammo or build a sentry gun or use your flamethrower. There's these giant green guys that have this defensive shell on the front of them, so you gotta shoot them in the ass or in the face to do any damage to them. Then there's these enemies that live in the ceiling, then they reach down and grab you and, and and it requires your teammate to shoot it to get you out of it. And then there's these giant plants that fire green shit at you. There's bugs that fly around and they spit at you. There's fat bugs that fly around and spray slime everywhere. There's bugs that climb around on the ceiling and shoot webs on you. Wow, a lot of bugs. Typical early access game. So pretty much every fight, you gotta know what you're up against and react accordingly. Like, you can't just run and gun everything. You gotta make sure that you're using your ammo effectively and not just pumping bullets into something when you don't really need to. The cave systems are pretty cool as well. Each biome has different kinds 
kinds of obstacles and weird quirks about them that make the spelunking interesting and the atmosphere of some of the maps can be straight up beautiful or downright frightening depending on where you are. So you'll tend to gravitate towards your favorites after a while, although certain maps have specific minerals on them that you'll need to unlock stuff, so it's pretty much impossible to just stick to one or two maps every time. But other than the gameplay, where Deep Rock Galactic really shines for me is its charm, which is 100% carried by the characters themselves. Okay, come here. The dwarves are all very rude, they're filthy, uh, they pretty much only really seem to care about mining and drinking, which is pretty relatable, but the voice acting is top notch. Please don't kick the barrels into the launch bay. And very much like TF2, the voice lines tend to grow on you and have become already an instant source of repeatable meme material within the DRG community. Rock and stone, brother! Rock and stone! I have a lot of praise for this game already, despite all odds of it potentially turning out to be another early access, overreaching, procedurally generated piece of garbage, which is unfortunately to be expected from a lot of indie game titles these days, but it certainly doesn't come without its complaints. I mostly have issues with a lot of smaller things, like how occasionally difficult it can be to tell certain classes apart at a glance, uh, the weapon upgrades being pretty underwhelming and the perk system having practically no effect on the game whatsoever like wow extra 12% moving speed at the highest rank wow you can deposit stuff faster that's epic but the best part about the little complaints like this is that I can see that they're being looked at by the developers and they already plan to be fixed in the future. Ghost Ship has this really awesome roadmap on their website with detailed specifics on upcoming patches that goes all the way until the end of this year so I can't even really complain about certain things because I can literally see that they're already planning on addressing those things. Despite the dev team being really small, it gives me a lot of hope for the future of this game just because this little page with their plans on it. You know, if only some developers Developers would take the hint and do something kind of similar. One more thing to mention is the music, because holy shit, the music is almost worth getting this game entirely, especially if you're a huge dark synthwave nerd like I am. The soundtrack is mostly low key throughout the majority of the cave exploring parts, but when the mission control guy gets on the radio and is all like, swarm. I repeat, swarm. and then the music is all like, I love that part. It gets me so pumped. Anyway, Deep Rock Galactic is 25 bucks on Steam. I think that it's also available on Xbox, uh, and you can pay $40 for the supporter upgrade, which basically just gives you some cool-looking armor and a supporter badge next to your name. But it's, it's pretty much just a $15 donation to keep the developers going. Uh, but the price tag is pretty important, I think, because while there is a single-player mode where you play with a robot that you can you can have him help you mine minerals and lay down some suppressive fire, the real game is the multiplayer, which you can easily jump into with randoms, but playing with friends is extremely fun. So if you really want to experience DRG the way it's meant to be experienced, the $25 price tag I think makes it a little bit more realistic to justify buying a copy for yourself and a friend, which still comes out to being cheaper than a typical full-priced game. But if you like cooperative first-person shooters as much as I do, with a splash of Left 4 Dead and a bit of inspiration taken from my personal favorite games such as TF2 and Minecraft, then definitely give Deep Rock Galactic a go. It's no joke a diamond in the rough compared to a lot of these type of games on Steam, and I honestly wish nothing but success for this game. I really hope it doesn't just peter out and die off like the rest of the other promising games that I've enjoyed in the past. Rest in peace, Gigantic. Rock and stone, brother! <laughs> what? Okay. <laughs> Bye! <laughs>